where is Squirrel? There he is. Right there. That's our second squirrel. Squirrel that lives up by the house is a different squirrel. What's happening is I have a decent day, so I'm dropping everything and I'm going to start cutting some brush. Um, in an original video, I talked about a site plan, what I want my farm to eventually look like. And I even took a little walk around the property to kind of show you guys what it looks like. But I have decided at this point not to expand as far as I had originally planned. And this is the cucumber greenhouse here. Looking back, the old garden ski. And let's just go down here real quick like. Oh, and take a look. So I had originally wanted the edge of the garden to go all the way down to like that tree right there. That's probably another 50 feet or so. But what I wanna do now, I've decided, is only clear to about another 25 feet from the end of this greenhouse. Put another greenhouse right here and then clear everything back there. So that's what I'm getting started on today. So I've just got piles of brush and got some of the underbrush cleared out here. So I am going to continue cutting brush. I cut brush all along here, hard to see, but I'm gonna keep working through this area today. I'm gonna have a uh, slick doing a time lapse of me brushing this area out so we can kind of see what it looks like as I go along. I'm standing here at the berry patch looking back what I've cleared and I think I need to go farther that way. I've got some brush in here. I think that probably needs to, to come out. You might be wondering, why am I making my garden smaller than I had originally planned? And I guess there's a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, after doing the, you know, growing and selling this year, I kind of think that that might be all the space that I need. The other thing is I think it might be all the space that I can handle by myself working, you know, getting enough compost for the area every year and getting the beds ready and getting starts and everything. And then the other thing is that, um, you know, this is where we live and so we we kind of got this spot because we wanted to be like out in the woods and the more i go west the more i clear the less of a brushy tree buffer is between the the main road out there and us we're in town but we're right up against the woods the fo you know forest back there and there's nothing back there so uh, to kind of keep that feeling of isolation, it'd be nice to have a bigger buffer. So that's the other reason. And there's no reason why I couldn't later on go farther that direction and expand the garden farther that direction if I want to. So for now though, it's kind of nice to think that Raven now. <laughs> to think that this is this is going to be my garden size and uh, just focus on developing that. What I want to do besides expanding the garden 25 feet west of that greenhouse is I want to also bring it all the way this direction up to where the berry patch is. 
that rained yesterday and then today and tomorrow I think it's supposed to be decent. So I am yanking off this little bit of Thrips row cover um, and I'm going to put some leaves on this patch of garlic and then um, tarp it. And then the rest of this bed, I think I'm just going to tarp, but I'm not going to do that today because I want to hop back on clearing a little bit of brush and getting some trees cut down. But I wanted to do this now because with this clear weather, we're supposed to get some temperatures down in the 30s. It's not supposed to be freezing, but getting close, you know, and so I want to get this garlic covered up. I've got a wad of leaves on here. Pretty thick. How's that? Uh -huh. So there's the greenhouses over there. And I measured 25 feet off because I need five feet between greenhouses than a 20 foot greenhouse. And I've just been trying to take the time to pull a line along here. And I've been measuring off the fence posts, 25 feet. And looks like I need to take a little bit more brush this direction. It started to rain quite a bit and then the no CMs came out and they were biting me in the eyeballs, so. I did get this area right here all brushed out and all the way to the end pretty much and pulled this line, which is, I guess, kind of straight. Here's a mushroom that's sitting up here on these branches of this tree. And we had read that um, squirrels will eat mushrooms, but we didn't know that they stashed them. And uh, Tyler had noticed another mushroom up by the house, stashed just like this. So squirrel is actually more effective at mushroom hunting than I am. Here's squirrel's other stash of mushroom. He's got propped right there. This is out at the other edge. The east edge of the property. So I haven't used this little electric chainsaw for like a year or something, so I'll have to get used to it again. <laughs> I misplaced my um, safety glasses, so all I could find were these goggles, so I'll be wearing these. Um, just want to get the little tiny trees like this guy here. I'm not going to even do like some of the medium sized trees. I just want to kind of, in some ways, just keep brushing it out so that for morale purposes, I can say, look, all everything that I got done. Um, <sighs> feeling pretty bummed, dudes. I just learned that yesterday my family in Colorado is do under pre-evacuation for a wildfire. And so my little old folks are gonna have to get in their camper and they're all packed up, so. This is after like just a number of weeks of my other family in Oregon getting smoked out and they were having to stuff things around their doors and their windows to keep the smoke from coming in. Anyway, just super bummed, man. It's like, couldn't we get a break with something decent, you know? Anyway, not my usual happy self today, but cut down these beautiful little trees that have been growing for years and years, but we're gonna grow a garden for food. Those batteries must have been 
used before because this thing's already run down. Oops. So, let's see. Yeah, that's weird. What? Shoot, one of these batteries isn't probably charged up. Well, I'll see how it goes. Um, I changed up those batteries, but one of them's almost dead, so it's just they're not working that great. So I think I'm gonna run to the store and grab some things I need to get. Okay, so I'm back. It's only a little after five o'clock. Well, it's almost 5:30, but it's already getting dusk. So I got the batteries charged, and I'm gonna try and get those a few trees down there, and then a couple trees right here turn around and grab a couple trees over here. So the chain tried to jump off the bar, so I'm gonna see if I can't pry it back on and stuff. Okay, so he's put back together. Um, always remember, don't fiddle with the saw unless you take the batteries out first. to it. Well folks, it's actually getting dark dark so you can't see anything but I'm just gonna grab a couple of tiny little trees here and I'm gonna call it good for the week. So you might have thought that I was joking around putting mushrooms in the trees, but actually those were put in the trees by squirrels. It says here, in summer, it's possible to come across the unlikely sight of fat white mushrooms tucked into tree branches. Red squirrels harvest mushrooms and carefully dry them before caching them in trees near the midden. And the midden is where they keep their pine cones and other food for the winter. And um, you might, it's important not to think that the mushrooms that are in the trees are something, oh, the squirrel can eat it, so I can eat it too. Um, that type of mushroom, because they can eat poisonous or psychoactive mushrooms and survive. So don't eat, don't eat the poisonous mushrooms just because the squirrels can.